if playing Super Nintendo games on your iPhone or iPad sounds like a good idea and a good way to pass the time, do I have the thing for you? This tutorial will show you how to install RetroArch on iOS 11. First thing you want to do is go to libretro.com and then you head into the forums. Look for the Apple devices subtopic of RetroArch and there's a thread in there about the iOS 11 builds. If you head towards the bottom of that post, as I'm making this tutorial, 1.6.8 is the latest one that I would consider functional. But maybe by the time you're watching this video, it's something newer. So I'll just go ahead and download that. It's around 200 meg. Now there are two options for the next phase, depending on whether you've got a paid Apple developer account or not. If you do, you can sign the app yourself. So just search for GitHub iOS app signer and download that app. If you don't have a paid Apple developer account, you'll have to use the Cydia Impactor to install the app on your phone or iPad. The problem with that is that the signature will expire every seven days. So you need to repeat this process once a week. I'll show the actual process you have to repeat. It's not this part right here. So they're all downloading. Let's have a look at the Xcode version first. So if you open up the iOS app signer, and drag the IPA file you downloaded, that's the app, RetroArch 1.6.8, into the input file, Choose your provisioning profile and click start. Save it any way you like. That'll sign the file with your developer ID. You can keep an eye on the status at the status bar along the bottom. And it'll say done when it's finished. There we go, you can close that. Now we want to go into Xcode and open the devices organizer, which is either Command Shift 2 or in the window menu. Now with your iPhone connected, click on the plus button and find that IPA you just created and that'll install it on the phone. Done. Now the Cydia method is this and this is the part you would have to repeat once a week. Open up the Cydia Impactor. Copy it into applications if you're going to be using it a lot, otherwise just open it. Now in the device menu, choose install package. Find the original IPA you downloaded. And then you've got a few prompts to enter in your iTunes account. If you've got two-factor authentication, you will need to create a device password. All right, on to the next step, which is downloading a ROM. So I like loveroms.com and I'm gonna download a Super Nintendo ROM. Super Mario World, probably the greatest game ever created. Uh, 
and that's not working. Let's just grab the fast download. It's a tiny, tiny file, should be done in no time at all. Now there are two options to get this onto your phone. Since I've started on the Mac, what I'm going to do is use another app just to browse the file system of my phone and copy the ROM over. Now my preferred app of choice is iExplorer. So download that. There are a couple of other ones as well. But anyway, once you've downloaded one of these iPhone file system exploring apps like iExplorer or I think PhoneView is another one, open up whichever one you've downloaded, go into the app section, find RetroArch in there. And then in the documents folder, you want to drag in the ROM file from earlier. I'm just going to take out those weird characters in the file name just in case it causes any problems and just drag it in. And it should copy over within a few seconds. Now heading on to the iPhone, let's open up the RetroArch app and tap on load content. And in our second folder there, you'll find the Super Mario World file. These are all the emulator versions of the Super Nintendo. I find the ones at the bottom work the best. You can see it doesn't look too good, but all the on-screen controls are there, and we're playing Super Mario World. You can use the on-screen controls, but it's much better to play with a controller if you have one, and I'll show you how to map those keys. And to close the game, just use the Space Invaders button that's up the top, and it's towards the middle. One option, if we don't have a computer with us at the moment, is to download a ROM from Safari directly. Close any pop-ups on LoveRoms, loveroms.com and have a look at the Super Nintendo ROM section. How about this time we download The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. Now tap on the green download button and this time tap on more underneath the open in section and you'll find that RetroArch is actually a target to open the app. It will seem to crash but it will be there. We go load content again, and it's in the downloads folder. No, it's in the documents folder. Then inbox. There's Legend of Zelda. Browse the archive, and there's our ROM. Choose your emulator. Again, the four at the bottom seem to work best for me. And that seems to be running well. How about setting up a controller? First thing you want to do, of course, is to make sure your controller is connected. So let's head into Bluetooth and just pair my SteelSeries Nimbus controller, which is a very good controller. Now let's head to RetroArch. Go into the cog, bottom right, and then input. And then scroll down until you can see input user one binds. Then basically you tap on the button and then tap the key on the controller to bind it. So say for instance, tap on user one B button with your finger on the screen, and then tap the button on the controller. Let's do Y, let's do the D-pad, let's do A and X. You might notice on the Steel Series controller that um, X, Y, A and B are in different locations. To what you might expect. So where it says A, I'm actually mapping it to B. Let's do the triggers as well. And then let's go back and just make sure they work. So let's load content again. Let's kick back into Super Mario. Now if you tap the keyboard button up in the very top left of the screen, it'll hide those ugly on-screen controls. 
There we go, my controller is now controlling Super Mario. It's a bit small though, and it's a bit of a waste of screen space. So what if we turn that sideways? This is The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, running in landscape mode. And I'm controlling it with the Steel Series Nimbus controller. You can do this on an iPad too, and it's possibly even better with that nice big screen. There you go, Retro Arch on iOS 11.